totaling 10,000 cases. Right now, only the two countries with no new cases reported. But we talk about because of the testing capabilities, maybe the number actually was underestimated. We talk about actually no one place can be immune from the whole spreading. And we're all asking that one is the time we can see the end of the spreading. We talk about actually that's not depend on the European countries or American countries. We believe actually the African countries or India actually hold the key to stop all the spreading. So today, we bring our focus to the African continent, and we also invite our Chinese ambassador in Kenya, as well as the a doctor from the a Department of Respiratory and Critical Illness, our expert Wang, and we will have the a good communication in the following one hour. All right, let's invite all our speakers. We have Ambassador Wu. Hello to all. And the a Chinese ambassador to Kenya. Very glad to see you all. I'm a Wu Peng. Hello to all from the Department of Respiratory and Critical Illness. My name is Wang Wei from Liaoning. And we also have three representatives, also the a Chinese overseas Chinese or the a representative of the a Chinese companies in Kenya. So first of all, let me start by asking two questions to Ambassador Wu. So right now, we really want to know the updated information. We know right now, the on the one hand, the a African continent is encountered by this COVID-19, and it's also with its weak system in terms of the a health institute as well as testing and second regarding the food safety and because we're not also suffering from the a east african the a locust swarm and the third we also look at the a ebola crisis because right now we also reported new cases with ebola so regarding the a most updated information ambassador Wu, what's your knowledge thank you for asking this question I would like to first I take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation first to the expert Wang said you work at the first affiliated hospital and also you are the chief leader of the a COVID-19 medical treatment group in Liaoning so we are very glad to invite you to introduce more knowledge to all the uh, friends here in Kenya. And I also would like to thank all the uh, team with CCTV and the CGTN, as well as the A uh, uh, CGTN Nairobi station for all your great support to make today's live stream available. And I also would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you here, the uh, overseas Chinese. So I would like to See, you're more engaged in today's conversation. So talk about the uh, first case actually found one month ago, which was uh, March 13th, so as of yesterday. The uh, total case is 197, eight deaths, 25 cure and discharge from a hospital. Right now, we still have 164 patients. So to our knowledge, we have uh, three Chinese the uh, confirmed cases. The good news is they all male symptoms, and the um, embassy actually have keep keeping close communication with them. And we also urge the a uh, Kenyan side to give them best treatment. So since the uh, outbreak of COVID nineteen in Kenya, overall the progress is sound. Of course, all the A disease prevention and control should fit in their own circumstance. And if you look at the actually conducting the A border testing and the A put some of the A restriction on the transportation and they also take good measures on quarantine, like Nairobi, Mombasa, and the other two cities. Total four cities right now actually stop or 
halt the uh, intercity transportation. So within each city is still can do the uh, outdoor trips. And we also seen the a uh, further tax cutting as well. So right now the a uh, outbreak has been going on here for one month, but we believe that with the a uh, improved capability of uh, nuclear acid testing, we would expect to see more confirmed cases. But all in all, right now, the whole situation in Kenya is quite safe and stable. But we believe under their strong leadership, we believe that Kenya is on the right track with right measures taken and can fight and win the COVID-19 outbreak. And we talk about actually Congo found one confirmed case with Ebola. So under the a guidance given by WHO, Kenyan side also have measures in place to fight against the a Ebola. And regarding the a locus flag, the Chinese government was as other partners actually also give them a helping hand to fight against the a locus swarms. But we talk about right now we're facing a severe situation from the a transportation side because right now we have taking some measures on the a halting transportation. But we believe we will see more progress going on in fighting against COVID-19 as well as locust swarms. Another question to our ambassador, as you mentioned, the transportation, we know the bilateral economic activity is actually quite rich. But we know Kenya right now stop all international flights. We would like to know any Chinese citizens right now are stranded in Kenya. Thank you for mentioning this very important question. Actually, the uh, Chinese side and the Kenyans actually are keeping very close communication and cooperation. So far, we have around 30,000 Chinese. That's, we also have the uh, 4,600 employees of Chinese companies and also the A20 Chinese students, a majority of them actually in the A uh, Confucius Academy, I believe later on, or the A uh, Madame Li Jing will mention more about that. We talk about the uh, stranded Chinese nationals. I believe that because of the A uh, spring holiday breaks, they have the A uh, family visits, maybe here in Kenya or the A uh, elderly people or the A. Uh, uh, children, they may have some disease here. So with the uh, Chinese embass embassy in Kenya, oh, it's such a great importance to our people's health and the safety. And this is, I believe, the uh, most urgent task for us, given by the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs as well as our central government, that we should earnestly protect our people's health and safety. And we believe because of the COVID-19 outbreak, we may see some the worst situation may happen in the public security. But actually, we have already established a very close communication with the Kenyan side regarding their DA transportation, the Health Commission, Public Security Bureau. We all keep a close tie with all these authorities. And regarding the aid treatment, of the a Chinese patients. We also talked to the a president of the designated hospitals, and we even establishing the communication ties with the a doctors or the nurses in the designated hospitals. Based on my knowledge, the a overseas Chinese are facing some difficulties. I would like to said assured that I have the full knowledge about your situation and I'm doing my best to find the a best solutions 
to solve your issues. So our hotline is always available and can be accessible 24-7. Let's work together to overcome this difficult time. Thank you, Chinese ambassador. And today we also invite expert Wang from Liaoning. So the, a very brief question first to start the conversation. So we talk about the African continent. We know that not have a quite sound health system. So do you think the African country are capable to coping with COVID-19 outbreak? This is a very important question. I believe that concerns everyone. So the COVID-19 outbreak right now is defined as the international pandemic, which required the concerted efforts of all countries. That is why we conduct this online conversation. So I'm from the Department of Respiratory and Critical Illness. So we are actually the first responder, and we are the ones who should work on the front lines. So for myself, I'm working on the a treatment of the patient with COVID-19. So far, we have involved in this fight for two months. Right now, the cure rate is around 98%. We can say that we have right now achieved the a first phase victory of the fight against the COVID-19 outbreak. So we also have some up some experience. So this is the a respiratory disease. First of all, we should cut off the transmission route we should cut it from its source. And third, we should protect the vulnerable group. We should protect them well. That is why we mentioned four early measures. So the early identification, early quarantine, early treatment, and the early reporting. So I believe this situation in Africa is challenging. That is, we also mentioned that we should take everything scientific-based. First, we should educate the public in order to raise their awareness and also identify the potential cases as early as possible. And second, let's protect ourselves well in order to avoid the cross-infection. And third, we should allocate the available medical resources as smart as possible and be prepared to deal with this COVID-19 outbreak for a longer time period. All right, thank you very much. Now the floor is open. Before, we always mention like lady first, but we see today, I see the uh, Mr. Zhang actually, the uh, other two guests from Nairobi, the uh, only, the uh, Mr. Zhang from the uh, Ramu, that's the a place with a mega project going on under the framework of a Belt and Road Initiative. So hello to all. My name is Zhang Nanfeng, working on the a Lamu port construction project. So that's around 80 to 90 miles away from Somali. So of course, COVID-19 has been posing some challenges to our work regarding the a flow of labor, the a flow of materials, as well as our the a on-site constructions, as well as coordination. I can tell you, actually, we have been affected in different ways. So far, the progress is 80% of the a schedule. We have around 230 Chinese staff and 767 people working on the construction site. So we know right now we have cut all the international transportation, the international flights, so we cannot really have people traveling between both sides. We have stock up on food regarding rice, drinking water, and other daily necessity. So that's good for the a whole people related to the projects to consume for around three months. We talk about Nairobi, Mombasa.
Uh, right, maybe we'll have some technical issues because right now in Lamo DA. Telecommunication signal still at the 3G era, so it's really appreciate for the Mr. Ang to that. Conducting conversation online. So let's see whether it works now. Whether we can hear you. Yes, yes. So I believe this is a really the, a rare opportunity for us to ask questions directly to our expert. So we talk about actually, we have a lot of people working on site but we not really know how to protect ourselves. So would you please give us some knowledge uh, regarding food? So amid this special time period, how we can eat smart, smartly, and also we talk about the psychological counseling part. So we talk about the first, see how to protect themselves, especially a lot of people living in the dormitory. And second, regarding food arrangement. And third is the a psychological part. So first, from my perspective, regarding the a personal preventive measures, first, wear masks. Keep your hand hygiene. If a condition is loud, please keep social distance. It's at least one meter. And also, please avoid public gathering. And regarding the a public areas, please use 75 percent alcohol to this. In fact, all the a uh, public items and also do ventilation at least twice per day. And a third, for the each participant in the product, please monitor their health condition, like the body temperature, look at their respiratory symptoms, whether they have a fever, dry cough, the a uh, chest distress. If they show some symptoms, please report to the related health commission. And regarding food workout arrangement, so keep enough hygiene and drink water. We talk about actually this is the a virus actually is not inactivate under the a temperature of the a 36 degrees Celsius. And we talk about please heat your food well. That is good enough to kill all the virus. Because we have quite limited knowledge about the virus, so a lot of people quite panic or feel scary. So right now we have more knowledge available. We actually right now understand what the virus is. So the majority patients actually only with mild or moderate symptoms, they can be cured. So don't be panic. Don't be worried too much. The disease can be cured. So if they have any questions, please ask. We can provide all different help to let them understand and then clear up their worries so people can feel safe and do their job in the projects. <laughs> Ms. Zhang, yes? OK, good. All right, thank you very much. I believe the situation right now in Lamo is quite complicated. All right, our rest the A2 guests and start with Madam Lee. Madam Lee is the A teacher from Confucius Academy, and now stationed in Nairobi. Right now, actually, the schools are all suspended. I believe after the outbreak, we will back to the school and we also have one designated hospital in our DA school. So we talk about our DA Nairobi right now, the temperature is quite high. We're just wondering whether the COVID-19 virus is the same as SARS, just one day suddenly disappeared. 
Uh, very glad to hear your voice. I, I'm also a teacher in my hospital. So we talk about actually the a school, the, a new semester, semester reopening actually is one of the a key part in the COVID-19 fight. So we talk about we should monitor that the students. If we send our kids back to school, we talk about actually they with the trouble history with the uh, heart heat region, then we should quarantine them for a certain time period. It's not recommend to directly let them back to school. And we also need to pay a close eye to their symptoms or their body temperature if they have the a fever or they show symptoms in their respiratory tract, then they should go to a hospital for further check. So if anything goes well, then they should also do a self-monitoring for two or three weeks. Then we actually also find the a group of potential patients as early as possible. So talk about the COVID-19 virus. Actually, this is a novel coronavirus. So talking about the a future trend, it's a future development. Right now, no one can predict it. But based on the a normal law of the a respiratory disease, whether not the a key factor to make the virus disappear. But we talk about the high temperature actually can make the virus inactive. But whether it seems like SARS and one day just miraculously disappeared, no one knows. We talk about ways a different condition of treatment as well as the a invention measures taken as well as the virus hosts. These are all the factors that might change the virus. We talk about maybe one day there's new hosts show up, then the a virus may be a mutate or varied. Then the we talk about right now, this is a really deadly virus, but maybe one day it's not that spreading so fast, or maybe it's not that transmissibility. Madam Lee, Nairobi, hello. All right, maybe later we will convey the message again to Madam Lee. So we talk about it right now, still the uh, people in China also have this question because right now we are from the winter to spring and right now we're coming to summer. So the uh, temperature weather really the a uh, key factor. So you can see actually the disease or the uh, confirmed cases also been found in Africa. So we talk about this is not really the a uh, key victory factor. Now we invite our third guest. And we also invite two new guests from Nairobi or from Africa. All right, we have uh, Mr. Guo and uh, Madam Bao. <laughs> so maybe a lady first. <laughs> so we start from uh, Madam Val. Hello to all. I have uh, two questions. The first question is, so we have a lot of the a second generation of overseas Chinese right now going to schools in Africa. So actually we'll have a little bit panic or we say we are quite worried, especially we worry about our kids. And what's your suggestion to us to allay our anxiety? And second, we talk about actually the mild symptoms here in Kenya may need to be treated at home because right now in Kenya, they do not have enough vital capability. So 
we talk about like stay at home or quarantine at home for these male symptoms sometimes and we also already found that in the uh, media coverage that male symptoms already have developed to severe or critical condition so what we can do so we talk about the coronavirus actually you can find all people actually are suspected population the key is actually we found based on the a uh, our observation, our, our keys are fine because based on our observation, if the a children are infected, the majority of them actually just male symptoms. And we talk about we should educate them and also you need to talk your kids and if they show symptoms, they need to know what they need to do next how to protect themselves so our kids let them prepared and also let them equipped with information so we talk about actually one of my friends actually the a uh, their kids also and uh, right now study overseas and they gave me a phone call saying that right now they have some da diarrhea the uh, very worried that whether I'm with the COVID-19. Actually, we, I, we found that the answer is not really have a good food quality. That's the reason. So we should really let our kids know inf not information about what kind of symptoms should be identified as COVID-19 and what kind of measures we need to take to prevent ourselves. These old informations we should let our kids know ahead of the time. And we talk about stay at home quarantine. Please make sure if they quarantine at home, let them to stay in the single room by themselves. And we talk about food. Let them eat alone. And also let them have enough nutrient and also enough water and also we talk about they need to have enough nutrient in order to improve or make their immune system stronger and we talk about if they have some symptoms let them be open and talk to their families don't keep silent and also take body temperature and record body temperature twice a day one time and in the morning one time in the evening and please wear masks and also do the ventilation if a condition allowed twice a day and also talk to the volunteers or their family members in a swift manner we talk about the public other areas please also do the disinfection in order to avoid cross infection if symptoms are shown, the prescription given by the doctors should be followed. I believe all these are the key for the people quarantine at home. So we'll talk about that. The a we receive a lot of phone calls, right? Asking different kinds of questions. Yes, before it's the a phone call from China. And right now we receive a lot of international phone calls because everyone quite concerned. So we work really hard. And let's see, invite Mr. Han back to live streaming okay, then maybe Mr. Han go first. Hello to all. So we have around 30,000 overseas Chinese in Kenya. Under the leadership of the Chinese embassy, we have done a lot of work in preventing the COVID-19 disease but we still have a lot of concern because right now this is not really widespread but still the situation in Africa is really severe so my question is based on your previous experience experience especially the experience in China I would like to know which group 
uh, population are more vulnerable to COVID-19 virus and what kind of measures we can take to treat them. So we talk about COVID-19 or the coronavirus actually is very special because all population, no matter it's male or female, the uh, children or elderly people actually are all suspected population. We talk about the group with underlying disease, they show even severe symptoms. So that is why we talk about our key focus should go into the, uh, the elderly people, especially with underlying diseases. So we talk about actually everyone with equal opportunity to be infected, especially those elderly people with the underlying diseases. So thank you very much. The, uh, my name is Guo Wenchang, the A uh, representative from the uh, Overseas Chinese Association. So we talk about, let's say, if I'm feeling good, no symptoms, but we talk about the TCM, like Lian Hua Qingfen, the capsule that can prevent ourselves away from the coronavirus. At war, we talk about we may have the a f show the a fever, and or we cough a little bit. Whether we're still good to take TCM like Lian Hua Qingfen capsule, or we have to go to the hospital. So it seems like Mr. Gu, you have some stock of Lian Hua Qingfen capsule at home. So regarding Lian Hua Qingfen or the AWHQW capsule do show some the a efficacy to COVID-19, but this is not the a magic bullet. So we talk about the principally if you show some fever or the a mild respiratory tract disease, then LHQW capsule can cure the some diseases. And also, please drink more water and eat enough nutrients. But let's say if you take LHQW capsule, the ATCM, for three con consecutive days, but actually your symptoms even developing to a severe condition, you are suffering from the a dyspnea, then you have to go to the hospital as soon as possible. So we talk about that this is actually a respiratory tract disease. If you're really hard to breathe or your fever actually is keep going on, then I suggest you go to the hospital as early as possible. Thank you. So we talk about mild symptoms, how to be treated at home. So we talk about Lianhua Qingwen capsule. My understanding is actually if you take it for the a precautious purpose then if you eat all your stock but then if you actually one day have attracted to the disease then you may not run out of the TCM so please save it when you really need to eat, take it so regarding the a Ebola Right now, we have found one new case is confirmed with Ebola. So what's that meaning? If have a great um, meaning, we should take it serious. And also, we talk about actually African countries has rich experience in fighting Ebola, whether that helped them to fight against COVID-19. So we talk about Ebola actually regain its strength every several years. So we talk about this quite different from COVID-19. So they from different family alpha virus. So we talk about Ebola actually transmitted from blood or the a body fluid. But COVID-19 or no coronavirus, actually the root of transmission is droplet or respiratory tract. So we talk about the a coronavirus right now. You can see it's show is quite high transmissibility, but Ebola is very different. 
So it's like the, a level four of a bio safety, which means it has a higher mortality rate. It's one of the most dangerous virus. That's Ebola. So we talk about actually Ebola is even deadly than the coronavirus. But the good thing for Ebola is Ebola actually right now has effective vaccines available. By the way, talk about right now COVID-19 right now, there is no effective vaccine. We don't know whether it's like SARS when they just suddenly disappeared. So Ambassador Wu, So today's dialogue actually is facilitated by Ambassador Wu, and we talk about one of the a uh, viewers saying that he bought the ticket but couldn't fly back to home because the international flights were all halted. So Ambassador Wu, anything from your side? Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Wang providing all these valuable answers. I believe this is really inspiring and really helpful. I understand that our stranded Chinese nationals right now facing some practical difficulties. And I make our promise. First, we spare no efforts to take all of your difficulties in your consideration. And the second, please trust our embassy, our country, our government will help to solve your urgent issues. So we talk about actually after the arduous efforts made by the people in China, we have seen right now the a curve is really flattened. But right now you can see the a coronavirus right now become an international pandemic and can find it in everywhere of our map. And we talk about we should work together. We should stay united and confident. To curb the spread of the virus. We talk about the a uh, mentioned several times that the a uh, healthcare system is not that strong in Africa, but the hospitals in Kenya actually are quite good. We have learned quite deep knowledge about the a uh, hospitals here in Kenya. We talk about the a private hospitals, especially their doctors, nurses, actually with very strong skill sets. And they also actually invite the a doctors and nurses from the a developed countries. And we also mention about the uh, threats imposed by other virus. My understanding is that the uh, my actually I also have the a uh, experience in the a uh, different countries like from the a uh, 2016 to 2018 I was the ambassador Chinese ambassador to Sierra Leone so we talk about the a uh, China and Africa, actually, we have established a very firm friendship that helped us succeed throughout all different challenges, ups and downs. So when China was in the a peak time fighting coronavirus outbreak. And actually, the a people here in Kenya, especially the a medical 
workers presented themselves to the Chinese embassy, saying that they would like to go to China to provide help. And we also actually received the, a CV from uh, one Chinese here and saying that she would like to work in the a Canyon hospital to treat patients. Actually, there's a lot of these different kinds of healing stories. The Everest respects no borders, but same for love. Love actually spread beyond borders. We believe this is time we should work hand in hand to fight against COVID-19 and to make our contribution to a shared community of a shared future for mankind. I really appreciate the opportunity like today. And also, thank you so much for Madame Wang. And hope you can give us more help later on. Thank you so much. It's, I would like to do so. So thank you very much for everyone join our online dialogue. Africa is so beautiful. We hope the African countries can stay strong and I hope you will secure a victory against COVID-19. Thank you all and hope we will see you later. Please stay safe and stay strong. Thank you. All right, that does for today's live streaming. Please always stay tuned with CGTN. Thank you.